What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of my brother's video podcast. I am your host, Eric the Fat. Check it as F A C T. Herb, I don't want to see any mouth movements down there, okay? That's F A C T, not F A T. Um, please, if you like what you are seeing, do hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you can also be notified of future recordings because we would love to have you watch and check us out. And um, also share and comment. Comments are most important. We love to hear you, uh, hear your comments. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to just say something to us so we can say something back. I am here with my brothers today, as usual. It looks like we got two brothers missing uh, in action. Eugene, the Marina comedy and Leon, the crooner. Um, these gentlemen are super busy, but uh, we do want to talk about the topic today of black on black crime. And uh, I got something to say about that. But before I get into it, I want to talk to my brothers right here, starting to my right, their left. I don't know. We're going to go with the uh, old soul. How you doing, baby? What's going on? Good, good. What's up, fam? This is Edwin, a.k.a. the old soul. Uh, chilling. Had a good weekend. Hung out with some neighbors. Went to my uh, nephew's housewarming. Uh, so had a good weekend. Word. Chilling. Word. Preacher, talk to me, baby. What's up? What's up? Hey, how's everybody doing? Um, had a pretty decent weekend. Uh, one of my kids is headed off to Baltimore for a scholarship. She left uh, Saturday. We went out and had a great send off on Friday evening. Got to play some spades. You know, I mean, you know, Doc, how, you know how I do. So we got to play some spades, had a good time. So uh had a blessed time in the Lord yesterday and just you know great great weekend. Hey man. Um big doc. What's up boy? How you doing? What's up y'all? How y'all feeling? This is Wade the big doc. Uh had a good weekend. Sh stressful weekend. Um no complaints. Had a good time. The weather weather was kind of chilly. I had to put the jacket on. Um that's about it. Um just had a good weekend. Had a wonderful weekend. Hey, bro, is it getting cold out there on the East Coast today? Yes, it is. <laughs> I, I heard it. I heard it just dropped drastically. Yeah. It's not. Come on, man. I'm still wearing shorts. <laughs> still wearing shorts. All right. Hey, uh, Doc, before we get off of you, bro, um, did San Francisco play this weekend? Did they win? You see it, right? Oh, uh, you're rocking it. Oh, you're not upset like last week. Okay, I got you. I just wanted to double check. I wasn't yeah. sure. All right. Yeah. All you, right. you see it, man. You see All it. Right. Right. Baller. <laughs> What's up, baby? How you doing? Ball is in the house. This is her Ball. Ball. You know, I had uh, not too bad of a weekend. Right. You know, hung out with the wife a little bit and hung out with the, uh, I call my sons the young Jedis, you know, hang with them for a little bit, you know, and uh, just kind of trying to get some other stuff ready uh, and trying to uh, fix up the house. A little bit around here, you know, but outside of that, you know, had a letdown yesterday with them. Uh, I'm going to keep Eagles. I'm going to keep it funky, Eagles. Come on. You know, uh, it's only two games in, you know, but there's a drastic need of something, whether it's defense or offense, whatever it is, it's, yeah, my man, uh, Don, appreciate some heart. We got to get it in there. All right. You know? Come on, bro. Hey, listen, listen, real quick. Uh, it seemed like the uh, <laughs> look, the comedian, the comedian, the Marina comedy is trying to join in here. So we'll, we'll bring him in. But listen, um, I am an Eagles fan. Donald's an Eagles fan. Herb's an Eagles fan. And obviously Wade's a uh, San Francisco fan. But my man, Edwin, you uh, you are a Dolphins fan. So um <laughs> Since 1982. 1982? 80, is yeah, that right, sir. brother? I didn't know that. You know, uh, you an OJ McDuffie fan? OJ McDuffie. Yeah. Uh, uh, the the Marx brothers, Duper and Clayton. Yeah. The whole nine. Me and me and OJ like best of friends, man. Wow, that's nice. I was a, I Wait, was a recruiter. I was recruited at State College when I wow. met him. He had just got drafted. When he came Rainbow. out of Penn State. Yeah, and I was parked. I had my BMW parked, and he had one of them cyclones. And we started talking about cars. And from that conversation, he invited me to an event they were having at Penn State. And after that, man, we hung out 
since. I've been to Miami, I can't tell you how many times, man. Just hung out with Marino, Keith Jackson, all them dudes, man. Nice. Yeah, I don't know how them dudes played, let me be honest with you. Much as they drank, I don't even know how they did it, man. I was amazed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Eugene, talk to me, baby. How was your weekend? Uh, interesting, man. Uh, it was slow, and then it picked up on Saturday and Sunday. I had a, a fellow Marine leaving, moving to South Carolina. Right. So I went down for a going away party with him down in uh, beautiful uh, Das Lagos, Corona. And then I went to a little winery over in uh, Miramonte in Temecula. So it started slow, but it finished strong. All right. All right. Hey, strong, who, as we like to say, it was strong. Strong. Who's your, who's your football team, bro? You know, which is weird, man, that you guys say that. When I was growing up, it was the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> But when I started working in the Marine Corps and I started meeting all these NFL dudes from Penn State, right? And Kajana was a friend, and uh, Kerry Collins was a friend, and uh, was uh, my linebacker. Man, he played for the Giants. He crazy as hell. But I became a fan of theirs more than I became a team guy. Got it. I think it just goes with age, but I still probably like the Chiefs. But 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 growing up, it was Kansas City. But as I got older and I became friends with these guys. Right. I became a fan of them more than I did of one team. Word. Good, good, good. Mr. Kruna, how you doing, baby? What's up? What's up? How you guys doing out there? Hey, fantastic. Yeah. I'm glad I can make it. Hey, yeah, Kev, thanks for the invite to the wineries, man. I appreciate that, man. You know, I, saw Nate, was, I saw Nate was in the house. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Thank you, Kev. You know, it was a... Uh, oh, my <laughs> ass. Hey, my name ain't Kevin. It ain't, it ain't, hey, I ain't gonna tell the crooner that. You know he, hey, you know he hey, got many hey, problems. Hold hey, uh, crooner, it was an impromptu, man. Improv. We just we just up and did it. I needed to pick up some bottles. And uh <laughs> they called me. I had to pick up four bottles and they wouldn't even let me in to be honest. Yeah, good, good, good. Believe me. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have good. to say, you guys are on a whole different type of time. You weren't about being invited. Don't invite me to no winery. Exactly. I mean, that's well, must be a West thing. I mean, I, I mean, I'm just saying. They got some nice wineries out here, man. I'm the best. Uh, Mr. The Cruz, best. Who's your football yes, team, bro? Who's your football team? Man, get out of here. Dallas. I go with no, no. Man, I go with the winner. Whoever winning, that's what I'm going to say. Hey, 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 all right, I hear I can't you. believe how people, man, go with these teams. I mean, ride or die. That trips me out, man. I like. Yeah, I ain't a ride or die. They gave you no nickel. They gave yeah. you nothing for yeah. entertainment, and you like ride and die for them. Listen, my son gets upset when you talk about the Lakers. Let me say this. Let me say this. I am. Uh, I'm an Eagles fan because I'm from Philly. But let me explain something. I, I don't bleed green, bro. I mean, I I love Philly teams. All oh, Eagles, Flyers, Sixers, Phillies. Cause I'm from Philly, I support them. I'll rock all their gear. Uh, to that point, though, I hear you, man. I just can't. You know, people get highly depressed. But that's a whole other conversation, fellas. Hey, hey, uh, let me say this real quick for the Eagle fans. I went to uh, the stadium with the the Miami Dolphins, right? And they briefed wow. us before we went not to wear no Miami Dolphins gear. You in damn the game. right. That's what they told us. They, <laughs> that, and this is real. They said do not. And let me tell you something. They was fighting, brother, from the top turnstile to the bottom. They was mixing it up. I was like, man, that was the craziest stuff I've ever seen in my life, bro. They was getting it in. They was getting it in. They were throwing. Come on, I'm getting here real fast. They don't play. Philly don't play, man. I went to, uh, I was in San Francisco. I was in the Navy, so I was in San Francisco. But I was in Oakland part of town. Come on. Man, good people ain't no joke, man. Come on. People in Oakland, they 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 ride or die. They, they I yes. mean, they, they really ride or die. Oh yeah, they, they like that here in San Diego. Those Oakland fans. That's why the Chargers got out, bro. Anyways, listen, we ain't gonna we can talk about football all day. That'll be a whole nother conversation, right? Uh, of some fun talk. But I wanna um, I wanna talk about black on black crime, right? And so let me explain. I put black on black crime as the topic, uh, fellows. But quite honestly. Black on black crime for me is a misnomer, meaning it's a, it's an inappropriate designation, right? Because um, crime is crime. They don't talk about white on white crime, right? They don't talk about Hispanic on Hispanic crime. I mean, crime is crime. It is something that we should talk about and we are aware that it is occurring in our communities, right? But um, I'm not sure if I really like the title black on black crime, the topic, you know, the title itself, being thrown out there it's often from my perspective thrown out from the right you know when we talk like black lives matter there's an argument out there well if black lives matter 
you know, then, you know, why black people still killing black people. That's a whole separate topic. Black Lives Matter, from my perspective, is really about police brutality. Let's, we could talk about that. That's a whole separate topic. But um, I put black on black crime because it is a topic that's out there. I'm not sure if I necessarily agree with that because I think it's inappropriate given the fact that <clears throat> most crimes are committed by those of the same race or ethnicity, right? So according to the U U.S. Bureau of Justice, um, with respect to violent crimes, offenders are usually the same race or ethnicity as the victim, right? Um, and so I, I put that out there, you know, for you to think about, like, especially one of the things I want to, you know, talk about and ask you is if Black Lives Matter, then why aren't we screaming it when we kill our own? That's an argument out there, right? Yep. And for some, a valid argument. Um, but it's a question I really want to, I want to talk about that. I'm just, I'm going I'm to open the floor to that because I really want to hear all your different opinions. Um, uh, there's Harvard research out there that says uh, black on black violence is largely concentrated among small number of criminally active individuals and, in, and, and it occurs in a small number of risks, the settings, right? Or disadvantaged neighborhoods. We do know that socioeconomic status uh, is definitely an issue with respect to uh, how uh, where crimes are committed, right? The disadvantaged. Um, and so I'm going to throw some stats out there real quick, and then I just want to talk about it and then talk about possible solutions, get your input. Um, so I'm only throwing stats out from the number one and number two homicide uh, cities, okay? Anybody know what they are? Chicago and, Chicago and Philly. Detroit. Chicago and Philly. Oh, Philly. Chicago and Philly. So Chicago, um, as of today's date, is 560 homicides as of September 20th. So that's up 50% from last year, where it was at 374. I took that directly from the Chicago uh, Police Department. Philadelphia homicides to date, 300, uh, as of September 20th, 331, up 34%. Uh, they were two, 247 last year. I took that directly from the uh, website. San Diego, 50. Right? 50. Um, in 2019. I, I couldn't find stats as to what the current numbers are, but, um, you know, Chicago has eight, eight, eight and a half million people. Philly has 5.7 uh, million and, and San Diego 1.54, right? Million people. So half of y'all, hey, half of my brothers in Philly, other, all of us, uh, uh, the rest of us are on the West Coast. Leon, uh, you are from, you know, you from Chicago. So I mean, I, I want to open the floor and I just want to talk about it, fellas, because we had a, a you know, Donald was impacted recently um, with a murder. So I just want to talk about everything we just talked about when we talk about crime in our community and how we're impacted. Go ahead, Donald. All right. So there's a couple things uh, I want to point out um, as far as the narrative uh, is as if you can't have two uh, ideas in your brain. Black Lives Matter, and then staying all Black Lives Matter. Obviously, you can actually have two chains of thoughts, right? But because of the political situation that we're in, the narrative is Black on Black crime, and then they'll give you these statistics because they want to negate the, the idea of Black Lives Matter. So mm -hmm. um, when uh, the mafia was killing people uh, in the 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s, Right. You didn't hear anybody saying it was Italian on Italian crime. Right? right. But the mafia only killed their own. Right. The Irish mob, they only killed their own. Right. But there was nobody going around saying, hey, it's a Irish on Irish crime. Right. Because that's the statistic that you just pointed out. It's clear that the people in our own communities cause the most violence to each other. Right. right. And so that's an interesting fact that you identified that from that Harvard study, right? But I think, might me personally, because I, I was impacted, I say that the issue that we have in our community is the lack of the policing in our own communities. Hmm. Carl and I grew up in a neighborhood called Holmesburg. And in Holmesburg, if you was around the corner doing something, a neighbor would have already called my grandmother and grandfather to identify that I've already done something. We don't have that type of communication in our community anymore. If a, if a young person's kid is doing something, you call them, the first thing the parent might say is, that wasn't my child. Don't be calling on my child. So we, we are missing a community of policing each other the way it was when, when we were kids. Uh, and I think if we was to ever get back to that, we, we might be able to curb this violence. Hey, so go ahead, go ahead, uh, Eugene. 
I think that is an excellent point. Uh, mm-hmm. Excellent point because when I grew up, I grew up without a father. I never met my father. My father was practicing social distancing. Um, 50 years actually but uh so while he was practicing social distancing there were other gentlemen in our neighborhood who stepped up and took on that role as, as a father as a as, a, as a, a male figure so i was able to grow up with the luxury of having multiple men in my life who helped guide and direct me to who i am today right. because there's so many people from south harrisburg that are caught up in, in the light just like in philly but when we had communities back then, like like he was saying, when we had communities, man, that got behind each other and supported. And another thing we did, we played a lot of sports. And sports kept us out of the streets. Mm-hmm. And I don't see a lot of city uh, uh, sponsoring sports. Back then, we even had tennis. I got a varsity letter in tennis. I'm the only black dude in my high school in the history of our school that got a varsity letter in tennis. All right, Arthur. And, and that was unheard of in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, let me tell you. Mm-hmm. But it was available for us. And it kept me off the streets. Sports kept me off the streets. But I do agree, we have to get back to the Sorry about that. Of, of, of parenting. So, so um, Doc, what, do you, what are your thoughts on this, man? I mean, so listen, some of us had personal experiences, right, Doc? Like, yes. <laughs> bro, look, known you for a long time, boy. And I mean, can, are you okay with sharing your experience when we were younger? I, mean, I, had, no, I had no problem sharing that experience. Uh, um, you know, um, uh, I was doing a night job, uh, doing my normal clothes up, a little young boy came past, had the gun, t- I smacked it out of his, I, I smacked it out of my face. He came back and he shot me in the mouth. Wow. So this little lump right here, if y'all can still see it, if, wow. if you, you might be able to see it, might not, but I, got, I still got the bullet still in my neck and it's um, it, it's it's crazy at that time because that happened in '98, and I didn't think that something like that was going to be happening to me at that time and point. So wait, wait, Doc, was that um, was that was that '98, Doc? Was that was that when you were at 71st and Ogons? No, it was the Sunoco. That's wasn't that's it? where I got shot at at 71st and Ogons. You got shot at 71st and Ogons, right? Is that the incident no. where you were shot in the mouth? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So but here, here's here's the here's the crazy part. The crazy part is going to blow your mind. The guy that was helping me inside the ambulance, it was his son that shot me in the mouth. No. Right. You kidding? Wow. So when we wow. go up inside, when we go up inside um, CJC, and I'm up in there, so <laughs> my wife going inside. They're going through the preliminary. I see him in there. I say, hey, you know, I'm all Joe with him. Hey, how you doing? You know, what's going on? Hey, this is me and my wife. He was like, well, you know, the guy you accused is my son. I said, your son? I said, you got to be kidding me. He's like, yeah. I said, bro, I'm going to tell you. When I saw his picture in that, when I saw his picture in the front, in the, um, the book, Dream. I said, that's the guy up. right there that popped me. And here's the other crazy part. How about he lives on Forest Avenue? Right around, the, yeah, yeah. So that goes, I think, yeah, so I, that goes back to the stat of like, you know, right. those crimes are, are local to the, the neighborhood, right? It's just small, incidents, you know what I mean? So yeah, I, Aaron, I'd like to chime in off of that. I, I had uh, multiple situations dealing with gun violence over my lifetime. The first one I had um, dealing with it was back in 83. And I worked for the, they used to have something called a mayor summer youth program. Uh, here in Philly uh, mm-hmm. for young kids. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had a little crew with me with, you know, shovels and all that. And that also was back in the day when a particular glasses that you wore at the time. Um, and I had kind of the knockoffs. One of the guys let me hold the knockoffs. Mm-hmm. Uh, while, while that happened, uh, a guy came up and put a gun to my head for the particular pair of glasses. Right. Um, I didn't know it was a real gun. It was my first time even seeing a gun and he just took him right off my face and they eventually caught him and i had to go through the whole uh justice process with my father um and, and pointed the guy out that was my first one but i lost my brother-in-law um he was also he was stabbed on the corner matter of fact he knew the guy in north philly hmm. um he was stabbed and then i had a nephew that was uh shot at gunpoint in the head in north philly um, the crazy part about that, that was over 20 years ago. 
he had went to that same corner like a week before. Mm -hmm. And when he came back through that block again, they they killed him. They shot him in the head. So I'm 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 very this is this is very close to home for me, uh, dealing with a situation like that. You you know, man, listen, I was uh so in, in looking at the research, man, I believe I was on the US Bureau of Justice website and they were talking about our most of these homicides are sixty six percent I I believe is the stat they use was over an argument. An argument. Right? Back in the day when we argued what we used to do, fellas. We fought. We just fight. Fight. fair one. Let's get a fair one. Fair one, right? And, and then we were fair one no more, bro. And then, then we was friends in the next hour. Yeah. And then yeah. we was friends in the next hour. That's right. surprising me, right? But now yeah. it's everybody's pride is in place, bro. And 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 it becomes a problem because you, you you know you you so prideful you know listen you need to respect me you need to respect me and and why don't you take here's my thing and I heard this why don't you take as much consideration with someone's life as you do with the sneakers you 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 really you know enjoy right or the gear that you you wearing right uh, and, and someone made a comment like that on the radio and I was like wow that's interesting because the way the way we and I'm just talking about human beings in general. The way we look at life these days, man, is like it's all about us. We don't care about anybody else, right? But, but at the same time, I, I feel there's a bigger, a bigger issue, right, as to why all this is, is happening. And, and I think uh, Donald touched on it maybe a week or two weeks ago when we kind of talked about – when you talked about what happened, Donald, in Philly – uh, you know, the, the environment, right? Society today and, and how we have a lot of people who are disadvantaged. And and so, Eugene, you 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 Why talked it? about it again today, too, in the sense that, you know, we used to have sports and we yeah. don't have a ton of support for su sports within the community any longer, right? We don't have, we don't have employment. Employment is very low. How about training people to be able to get a job, right? Training them with a specific type of uh, skill set. We don't have those things. So I don't know. I think there's a larger picture, but when we talk about solutions, I guess, you know, us as brothers, listen, I'm in California, right? I try to do what I can do from an education perspective and trying to help people from resume writing, interviewing, right? And trying to help individuals in, from that perspective. Um, but what can we each individually do to really try to help someone out. That's that's my question. You, Eugene. Can I say something real quick? I was reading something, and this is disturbing. Let me read this real quick. Tell you what you think of this. It says, you, you were talking about same color people offenders, right? Offenders were white in 62% of violent incidents committed against whites. Mm -hmm. Blacks, 70% of yeah. incidents committed against blacks. Mm -hmm. Hispanics, 45%. Mm -hmm. But only Black on black crime is put under the microscope yep. because it's used as an excuse for more aggressive policies and policing against us. Basically, they're targeting us as violent. Yeah. Whereas the other races are more violent than we are. Yeah. See, that, that's something hard to overcome. That's not just with us. That's the policing of us. Yeah. And when, when you know what the worst thing you can get from a black person, hear them say, I ain't got nothing to lose, bro. When you hear brothers say that, it gets scary. It's a wrap. They have lost all hope in everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's a wrap. That's scary. Let me tell you, a brother like that is a scary dude. Yeah, he feels right. though he has nothing to lose off of that. So it's like, okay, um, you know what? Either you're going to die or am I going to die? What are we doing? It is. So, I, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I listen. <laughs> you listen to uh, the Eugene. I get it. My question is though, per capita, right? Your stat is valid, but when we talk about per capita, right, it is it is a fact that we only make up anywhere between thirteen to fourteen percent of the population. Whole population, right? The entire population, and right. one of the stats you just threw out there, I think you said it was seventy percent. Yes. Was it seventy percent? Right. Yes. So if we make up. 13 to 14 percent of the population but 70 percent of the crime against I, us you know against us. yeah no yeah yeah exactly but that that's a political that's a political maneuver right it's a political maneuver like that that stat probably won't even be brought up again after this election right that's why there's no politician is going to be able to save us 
we need more big mamas. I agree. Mm-hmm. We need we we need to have the people in our families to stop. I mean, this is going to sound well. I'm just going to say it. I don't really care say how it, it sounds, but uh, we got the young people got to stop making babies. Dude. The m- parents are getting younger and younger, yeah, and they don't have the skill set. So yep. if you're a 30 year old mom with a 15 year old son, you don't Speak. have the skill set to to try to make that turn that young man. Not in every case, not in every case, but in a I good mean, majority of cases, coach, though. Correct, because I'm a coach, and I coach high school kids, and I know I, my entire my organization is Hunting Park Youth Development. You know, not only do we talk about coaching basketball, <laughs> that's just a tool that I use to get them in the gym. Exactly. But we teach life skills, how mm-hmm. to balance a checkbook, how important is your FICO score, how important it is to stay in school. Those are things, those are tools that they're not getting. The school system in Philadelphia is not preparing them. And I'm going to leave it with this real quick. In 1980, we, we, me, Vance, I'm sorry, <laughs> me, right, Eric, right. Uh, Wade, and you, and Ed, when we all graduated from the same high school in 1985. And here, here it is, 1993, 1994, I get a phone call from my cousin who's in the same history class that I had saying, oh, I got a book that you had. Mm-hmm. You mean to tell me that there's a book in the school that was probably from the 70s mm-hmm. that they're teaching you out of in the 90s and they expect you to be prepared as you go to college. It's impossible. It's, it's, it's asinine. I want to I wanna kind of jump in on that, Donald. Um, I think it also comes down to, you touched on it a little bit, it's the family structure. It's the dynamic. Um, the majority of us, okay, were raised by strong, single Black women, right? I had the luxury of my father, even though he was in another house and mm-hmm. separated, he was a mentor to me. He was my dad, right? So he always used to tell me, listen, trouble's waiting out there on the corner. Trouble's so easy to get into, but it's hard to get out of. Mm-hmm. And the problem with that is I had somebody telling me that. There is no one telling these people, these young people on the corner. So it comes down to mentors, male mentors. It comes down to that father, whatever you want to call it, that uncle or whatever you want to call it, putting positive things in their ear. And again, I'm going to frame it with this. When you're around positive people like Donald, like Eric, like everyone here on this screen that I came up with, when you're around positive brothers, you tend not to sway towards trouble, okay? You tend to sway towards the positive. And the problem is, again, there's a, for whatever reason, and I always bring it back to the family structure. We, we got to do something to, to step in. Men have to step in to try to mentor these kids. So interesting you say that, right? Like, from my perspective, man, this is... Uh... <laughs> So as soon as they started saying that you can't <laughs> discipline your child, as far as I'm concerned, things started changing. Absolutely. The government wanted to step in. And because yeah. my mom would whoop yes. my ass. Oh, yes. Seriously. Oh, I had, yeah, we had the number on the refrigerator. I Listen, used to tell the kids, if y'all, yeah, exactly. My neighbor smacked the shit out of me when I got caught for stealing something as a little kid. <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm keeping it real. I came home in the back of a paddy wagon, bro, trying to hang out with the kids. And I'm, what, 10, 12 years old, just following a group of kids. But had my mom, had my, my neighbor smack the crap out of me because I came out of the paddy wagon on that day. Little kid, 12 years old, riding our bikes. And then my mom came home and proceeded to whoop my ass, tie me to the bed, mm-hmm. rest mm-hmm. her soul, God bless her, and whoop me with a mm-hmm. belt. Look, and some will say, some will say, well, that's a, you know, that. You know, she shouldn't have did look. Thank God she did. Because who? Yeah, you know, you did, what I really want to say is, what I know, everybody's making some valid points, you know, and there was this, you got to say, like maybe a bridge that happened and fell between a certain point of when we were growing up and where we are now. Mm-hmm. Because just like, you know, Eric, you just said, you know, your neighbor would smack the shit out you or mom would beat your ass or, you know, because I had that on both ends, you know, so, but now we, we're in this age of where, you know, if you did go to the authorities, authorities say, oh, wait, you're not supposed to do that with your kid, kids, but now our kids are out of control. So you're telling me not to touch my kids, but at some point in time, 
you're going to handle my kids because you're not your authority. You're the police. You're the law enforcement. Now, had I beat my kids ass, maybe you would not have seen them. Mm -hmm. Maybe because at this point in time, you know, as kids get older, these women, you know, these young men get older, you know, they're looking for two things, employment and respect. Mm. You know, if you take away one of those, one of those will lead to something else. Are you not respecting me? You look at me a certain way, you know, I'm not worried about that if I know I got to get up and go to a job the next day. Right. I'm not worried about that if I have some type of training to produce myself as, you know, a, a, a viable citizen, you know what I'm saying? So there, those two things also kind of go hand in hand, being getting respect, receiving respect, and then also the other side being unemployed or trying to gain employment. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of kids, when I talk to kids, youth and stuff like that, the first thing, one of the top things they say out the mouth is respect. You know, guys walking down the street, oh, you know, he looking at me sideways, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be, the bottom line is they, they're looking for respect. You know what I'm saying? And if they don't have respect, here we go with this guy coming to a basketball court, shooting somebody, going to the corner store. Oh, that's the boy that said what he said and, you know, put some lead in his ass or whatever the case may be. So, so there's a lot of things that, as you said earlier, that we need to do as a community. And getting back to that, Edwin, is an uphill task. Yes. It is an uphill task. Battle, man. So what is – what? but fellas – Let's just talk about respect. What does that mean to the young culture these days, right? Like, what does that mean, All right? Just you know, I need to have respect. My honest opinion. They, yeah, they're, please. They're, you know, like I have three sons, right? And every one of my sons are taught to call everybody that's older than them, Mister. Mm. I still, I still call people older than me, Mister, because that's just the way I was brought up. That's right. And it starts at home. You know what I mean? It's something as basic as that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you know when you met my son's Vance, how they how they are a, a corner right. a mm -hmm. fact checker or that's mm -hmm. F A C T, not fact checker, but I'm just making sure I clear that up. But <laughs> you know, it starts at home. It yes. absolutely starts at home. And we have to integrate that in our kids. And I do that with everyone I respect. Like I'm never I can say I'm my son's best friend, but I would never be his best friend. Because mm -hmm. I will always be his father. That's and right. I've never crossed that line where I will compromise who I am as a father. And I see so many people doing that. They compromise who they are with their kids, then the kids don't respect them. You can't smoke weed with your kid and then expect them to respect you. Come you on. know what I'm saying? Come on, man. You cannot you can't do it. You can't be the town friend. Do. You cannot be the town friend. You can't. You can't. You, you cannot go to the same bar. Yeah. Yes. You can't go to the same bar. You can't hang out with them can't, at all. You can't do it. I'm so sorry, some, I'm old school. Yeah, and, I, and, I don't, I don't, I didn't spare the rod. I don't spare the rod. The book, the words say, "Don't spare the rod." I didn't spare the rod, <laughs> and I was ready to go to the judge, and the judge was gonna ask me a question. Well, well, why'd you beat him? Because I'd rather you judge me for whooping his behind than you than my son looking at right. a three to five year sentence because I didn't do right. my job. Come on, man. So, so, so some will argue. Some will argue that you can be your child's friend and be the parent. Well, I know I, you can be a friend, but you got you can't compromise who you are as a parent. Yeah, no, no, no. To, to your point, compromise right? that I got a problem, but you cannot to, compromise who you are. To your point, I, I'm not sure if um, you know you could be your child's friend to the extent where, as you said, you doing these same things, and where's the respect level, right? right. I mean, you know, they how right, right. a lot of that is what is the problem today is that everybody's trying to be their child's best friend. I want to go hang out at the club with my son or daughter. What in the world, right? right. Like, Why? I mean, there's, there's ways of doing these things um, and still being, um, you know, I don't even know if friend's the right word, right? right. I just want to be my child's parent who they love. It you is. feel me? That, that's and what I want. I didn't, I didn't want, I'm sorry. And, I didn't want to be loved. I wanted to be feared. I'm yeah. <laughs> and I, you know what? Many people in our lives, I did not like people who 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 uh, disciplined me, right? Mm -hmm. But I learned to respect them. Mm -hmm. And right. then now, as I got older, I understand why they disciplined me. That's right. And it made me a much better person. You know, my 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 fifteen year old the other day had to do a we we work we do surveys and things to help young people to try to process what's going on with young black kids. Right. So my son and I have been involved in an evaluation for the last five years. 
So we were heavily into it. And the other day, a lady asked my son who was his hero, and he said it was me. And that was the best feeling you could ever get as a father, mm -hmm. that your son respects you because of what you do for him, by him, to make him understand what it takes to be a man, like of teaching course. them to drive or teaching them to cook or teaching them to respect older people or to respect people in general. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the best thing I've heard man in years when he said that. You know, he wouldn't coast, but that's what he believes. And I'm, hope, I'm setting that example at home. So I want to I wanna say something. I want to say something. This is important. You know, I've met your kids, right? Yeah. Respectful as dirt, right? And so it's just interesting how there are so many youth out there today who are so disrespectful. Yes. What is the disconnect, right? And uh, I think, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I would, for me, it's acceptance. And uh, you talk about parents, young parents, it's acceptance, right? I'm in a, I'm in a basketball game. And I watch, it's a high school basketball game, boys. Mm. Let's say Imhotep versus one of the bigger schools, right? Right, right? And there's young people around, older people, and the young people are cussing and using and saying "dick this" and "dick that," and I'm and I gotta check them. Like, listen, this is a young lady right here. Please right. respect her. And they and they look at me as if I'm like like what I'm saying doesn't make sense. And I'm like, are you seriously going to? This is an elderly lady. Mm -hmm. You out here cussing and fussing in front of this elderly lady who's just here to support their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Now she may never want to come back to a game because she can, can't sit to a game without hearing, you know, words that end with T and K. So, I mean, so, so I was, well, Donald, are you saying they're trying to be accepted? No, I'm saying that the parents accept that communication from ah, the kids yeah. because the younger the kid, right? Mm -hmm. Listen, my mom, y'all know my mom, okay? She wasn't listening to 99.9 .9 when I was listening to 99.9. .9. But yet, mm -hmm. kids, parents are popping and rumping that same garbage music that they're playing today. How y'all listening to the same music? I'm listening right. to OJ's, the, the, you know, the stylistics, and not uh, 2 chains or some nonsense. But the parents <laughs> of these kids are listening to the same garbage that's on the radio now. There has to be a point. There, there has to be a point of reference, okay? When it comes to the respect issue, the respect issue is when they see you. And when I used to see my father getting up four or five o'clock in the morning, going to work, mm -hmm. right? He worked for a real estate company, did maintenance and everything, the different apartment buildings, um, and knowing that he's providing for me and my family. I mean, there's no law that said he had to, but that's what he did. So right then and there, that's respect. My son saw me getting up, going to work four or five o'clock in the morning, whether I was sick or not. Respect factor right there. I could be out hanging, trying to hang out with him or out cussing and fussing or whatever. But the fact of the matter is it has to be a point of reference in, your, in that household where they see something. Okay, there's a fine line in friendship and discipline, it but is. you have to provide that visually for them to see in there's order for them to to, to gain but, but, that. but yeah. what you're talking about that's not everyone that's not 90 percent of the kids i coach that's not their reality mm -hmm. they don't that's have that yeah. i'm sorry they own some type of public assistance guy you know whatever they need to do to survive right most of them they call me pop they call me uncle they call me dad they call me father they call they are looking for someone and my my role is to be that beacon to be that example is that i'm not a typical black man I'm married to the same woman that I've been married to for the last 30 years. I've had two kids by this woman. I don't have no other kids outside of, like, I, you know, they, there's a stigma on our community. Mm -hmm. And someone in our lineage has to stop the, 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 the flow of poverty. Someone in our lineage has to be that beacon that says, you know, it's not going to be me. I'm not going to succumb to the violence in the streets or the, the situation that happened. A lot of us on this call, had to go through some things, go through some things in order to get to where we are. Right. We didn't just wake up and all of a sudden we're successful. No, we had to go through some things. Right. I had to go through uh, not having food. My mom leaving us two and three and four days without food. Uh, you know, not having lights on in the crib, not knowing where I, me and my sisters was gonna get our next meal from. We had to go through some things. Right. Oh, yeah. These kids get five, six hundred dollars sneakers and their parents on welfare. How is oh, that possible? Yeah, no, that's a hey, hey, no, go ahead. I, I, I used to I had a hustle in the community that I had learned how to turn on the gas and the electricity when they turned it off. 
So when people got their stuff turned off, they would come get me and I go back and turn it on. I had a big old wrench and I knew how to cut the wire and I put it, because remember in the old days, they did everything from the outside and the inside, right? The gas. Yeah, 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 sure. yeah, you know what I'm talking about? about? Man, I was good at that. I got 20. You better, you better hope that listen hey, to you now. And I can run cable. And I can run cable too, bro. Hey, hey we're going to have to talk about our hustles. We're going to have to talk about our hustles another time, buddy. But I hear you. Look. <laughs> we had to do. But it didn't make me a criminal, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, you were you a criminal. Yeah, you were a criminal. Right. You were a criminal. For sure. No, I wasn't, man. You were a criminal. You were a criminal. So interesting. Yeah, you interesting. Survived. Good. <laughs> listen, listen, interesting. I, I've done some things in my past that were what I would consider to be survival, but at the same time, probably greed, you know what I mean? And so um, I, these, those are definitely, that's definitely a topic to, to discuss, but um, Kruna, I ain't heard from you all day, man. Well, listen, I, was, I, was, well I, was just, time, uh, so. I was just really loving what the preacher's saying, man, because he hit all the points, you know, and I'm, the one thing is that kids out here want to feel a part of Mm. You know, like that's why they call him dad and uncle and all that kind of stuff. Because if you notice, I've had people at my show calling me dad and uncle and brother and cousin because they want to feel a part of. And it, it means a lot to be a part of. I thought it was because you was old. It really does, you know. No, nah, they was waiting for that DNA <laughs> test back. <laughs> what, what's that, Herbert? Waiting for that DNA test to come back. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and who who is two chain? I'm gonna wrong, wrong, bro. Come on, stop. So listen. <laughs> I mean, Golly, we, you know you're wrong, brother. We well you're over wrong, time. You're we, wrong. Well over <laughs> we well over time, fellas. But um, I mean, this is a topic that we could really discuss yeah, for hours on fun. end. Um, I, you know, for me, the one main thing that I think is that we probably would all agree on is that we got to go back to community. We need to police ourselves. We need to be Definitely. a part of our community. Um, and we need to, because here's the reality: we can't depend on the government. Right, like the bottom line, we can't like we can't depend on the government, right? If we're gonna train, like we we depend on the government to try to help make jobs, and 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 listen, that's why we vote people in the office. But in reality, when it comes down to the bottom line, is we have to be there as a community, and more men and women have to step up to make a difference in these individuals' lives. And so, um, I you know I know it's tough, um. You know, are these things going to change overnight? Um, I like uh, Donald's, uh, his focus, teach one, reach one. Um, and I feel very, I've, I am very uh, like-minded with Donald in that sense of if I can just impact one, who knows who they're going to impact down the line. And that's a beautiful thing. So uh, I want y'all to continue to do what you're doing. Um, for those of you watching this uh, video podcast, um, thank you so much for checking us out. If you if you like these videos and want to see more, do hit the subscribe button, uh, hit that notification bell also so that you'll be notified of future videos. Um, please leave some comments. We love to hear back and the brothers will will shout out, you know, you know, shout out back at you. And uh, the other thing I wanted to share is that I know we've been trying to go live. This is new for us. Um, we, we, we're actually going to start moving to just going towards uh, doing recordings and then still dropping these videos out. Uh, to you all. Uh, we'll be dropping videos out now every Tuesday um, for you every Tuesday. So do continue to subscribe and uh, hit that share button, leave your notifications. Fellas, I love you all very much. Um, every topic we talk about, quite frankly, I don't think we got enough time. Uh, but next week, I think we should really maybe just have a little fun, take a little breather, talk about some things that are very lighthearted and just kind of laugh it up a bit. And um, if y'all ain't get a chance, man, y'all need to check out my my Charmin short. Um, <laughs> don't squeeze the Charmin, baby. <laughs> check out that Charmin short. I thought it was pretty funny. But uh, we'll have many more uh, shorts coming out to you. Uh, my brothers, thank you so much. Love you all. And love y'all, too. Good to see everybody, man. Y'all take care Peace. out there. Peace out, man. Have a good fellas. See y'all next week. Peace. Same time, same back channel. Word.